<laughs> and, and Hank, you're totally off the hook for the end of the service since you got you. <laughs> I'll, I'll take care of that one. So we have been looking at the fruits of the Spirit and kind of rolling through a few of them. And so far we've looked at love and joy and peace. And today we're going to look at patience. So I just want to read the, the passage again to you. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And I think it's important when we think about this that if Paul's writing to the church of Galatia, and this is a church under Roman rule, and a lot of things they did as Christians they had to be kind of careful of because of the whole law of the Romans and things like that. But Paul writes and says, some of these things, these things that God wants to grow in you, there's no law against those. You know, some of this other stuff you might be thinking about doing, there might be laws against, but not what really... Well, God really wants to grow in you. No, there's no law against that. And so today, we're going to add to our love and joy and peace that we've already worked on and look at patience. And we had a great example of that just a minute ago, right? Um, you guys were supposed to stand up to sing to the birthday people, and it took just a second. <laughs> and, and we heard from the front, but they're not standing. <laughs> but... Patiently, you guys did stand. See, so it's all working. Thank you so much for giving us that example this morning. I appreciate it. <laughs> I love you. So, today we're going to look at preparing for patience, practicing patience, and then at the end, perfecting that patience that uh, we've acquired. And, and I don't know, do you realize how important patience is in our society? And 2,000 years ago, patience was still important. And we're going to see some Old Testament passages, or even older than that, that patience was still important. You know, patience and endurance and patiently waiting for things, that's mentioned over 70 times in the Bible. Maybe that means it's important. I kind of figure anything you run across that happens more times than there are books in the Bible, it might be something we need to listen to. And yet we live in a society that has less of it than ever. I mean, think about it for a second. You know those little hand dryers in the bathrooms at like the Walmart stuff? Or, or McDonald's? And, and you, know, you know how everybody dutifully uses those, right? You turn it on, the starts blowing, you give it a little swish, then you wipe your hands on your pants, leave. Because nobody wants to wait on that. I actually, I'm a researcher at heart, so I actually tried this one time. I, but I want to know how long it takes to actually dry my hands under these things. Because I can't stand waiting to dry my hands on it. So I'm, like, I'm going to force myself to do this, I'm going to time it. 40 seconds. I was losing my mind over 40 seconds. The average stoplight wait, you know, you, ooh, stoplights, whoa, right? 30 seconds. Time it sometimes. Yeah. I mean, some of them go a little longer, but about 30 seconds at a stoplight. <coughs> and we're pulling our hair out. Wow. We need to relax a little bit in our society. Well, God has some words for that. Now, unfortunately, though, patience isn't one of those things that, you know, those first three things, love and joy and peace, we can get that the moment that we have this relationship with God. I mean, that, that, that moment where we're saved, right? We, we feel the love of God, we feel the joy of God, and the peace of having our sins cleansed in that moment. Unfortunately, in this particular series of events that we have in the fruits of the Spirit here, when we get to patience, there's this great big wall because we don't experience that in a moment you can't just walk up and say hey god i want patience like now <laughs> i know we want to but it doesn't work that way look what this says in romans 5 at the beginning it says therefore since we have been justified by faith now understand all these things i'm talking about first you have to be justified 
You've got to know Jesus as your Savior and Lord before any of this other stuff works or happens. Love, peace, joy, or patience. So if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, we've got to get that right first. Ask him to forgive you of your sins and come into your life and change you. And then we're going to start working on these things. So therefore, since we've been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoiced in the hope of the glory of God. Now see what? We get all that right at salvation. Not only that, but we rejoice in our suffering. Whoa! Time out. <laughs> Did anybody else see that curve coming? I mean, we were rejoicing because we're saved, and now we're going to rejoice in our suffering? Why? I'm glad you asked, because he answers it. <laughs> Knowing that suffering produces <coughs> endurance. Endurance is another word for patience. Being able to keep on going. And endurance produces character. And character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. So part of this equation that we just, we go all the way from salvation to an enduring hope. And the way we get there, part of that is our suffering. Our suffering builds in us Endurance. Patience. Now here's the deal. That's, that, that is why you can't just ask for patience now. Now I know some of you would be like, Lord, give me patience when you're in line or something, right? Christmas time, Walmart. Yeah. God, give me patience with this woman. But you know, we don't get it. I mean, he can help shore it up in a moment for you, but we get our patience from our suffering. We get the ability to endure from the things that we have to endure. Yeah, I, I, I read passages like this and I think about these things. I, I, when I was in school, I, I played a little football. That was my sport because I tried out for baseball and found out I couldn't catch or bat or <laughs> do anything in baseball. So I, I stuck with football. And, and so one of the things about football is you can't show up on Friday night and expect to play. You can't just be like, do whatever all week, and then, oh, hey, coach, give me a uniform. I'm here. It doesn't work that way. For one thing, you'd be good at it. You can't just walk out onto a field and play football because you have to know what the other ten guys are doing every play. So you guys can work as a team. And in order to do that, you have to practice. See, that practice builds in you the skills you need. And see, at practice, the thing I didn't like about practice, I loved plays. That was fine. Because I was on the line anyway, so the plays were pretty easy for me. You know, go across the line. But we had to do running. We had to run around the football field, especially if you goof up. We had to run around. Then you had to do sprints and run across the football field. And a lot of it. And when I was younger, I did not understand that stuff at all. Like, why is he torturing us? I want to play football. The fact is, the more you do the running, the less you get hurt in football games. The more you do the running, the longer you can play in the football game before you're exhausted and tired. The more you run, the more endurance you build. The more we suffer as Christians, the more patience we will have to wait upon the Lord. See, ultimately, that's what our patience is. Whether it's in a line somewhere, or whether it's driving down the road, or waiting on God to fix that problem that you can't do anything about. Patience is all about waiting on God's time. And we want to hurry up and get things done right now so we can get to the next thing. Not, I, not, not me, what we're supposed to be doing. What we're supposed to be doing might be looking around the moment we're in right now, and instead of pushing against that moment wanting it to be gone, learning what we need to learn in the moment, or reaching out to who we have to reach out to in the moment. And patience will allow you to stop pushing against time and look around at what you can be doing instead. 
I put in the bullets and they're waiting on the Lord. It's not sitting on the couch. Waiting on the Lord is doing what we have in front of us to do. It might not be what you want to do right then. It might not be how you want to do it right then. But patiently doing what we need to do while we wait on God. To just open the door and show us the way further in. But that suffering produces the endurance that we need. And that's what we need to make our character. And that character is what we use and have. We wrap all up and it becomes our hope. We can hope in God because of what he's built in us. We do realize then we have no hope if we have no patience. Think about it. In Romans 12, 12, it says, Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. Now, it's scripture, so it's really good, but I love how he put it. Because of our hope that we have because of our endurance and everything anyway, we just read that, but we should be rejoicing in the hope that we have. And if things are tough and things are hard and, and, and you're in a, a, a time of tribulation and trouble and trial, be patient. It'll pass. We spent like almost a year in this special kind of different world with the pandemic and everything else going on and all the adjustments we've had to make and, and friends that we and loved ones that we may have lost and all, all the things that are going on. And sometimes we wonder why, and sometimes we wonder when is it going to end, and everything else. But the Bible tells us, even in this, to be patient. It will work what it needs to work, and God is still in control of everything. Even in the midst of a plague, God is in control. <coughs> be patient in tribulation, and constant in prayer. If you've got nothing else that you can be doing, you can always be praying. Not that it's the last thing that we do. We do it at the beginning, too. Pray while you have other things to do. But if it comes down to you've got nothing else in front of you you can do, no effect that you can have, no love you can share, then in the middle of it, rejoice in your hope and pray. You've always got that. And while you're doing that, be patient, because it will change. So first we have to plow the ground, and we have to allow the situations that are in our lives to be there, experience them, and learn from them, and let that patience build in us. Let God grow it through the sufferings. But then... Just like that football game we were talking about. After you acquire it, you gotta practice it. You gotta keep on practicing it. You know, just like we talked about, kind of with love and with joy and with peace. We can acquire these things from God, but we have got to continue to use them. We've got to realize that they are there to get in touch with. Because you know, if you just start living through your life and you stop thinking about joy and love and peace. And when you stop thinking about them, you've got to stop feeling them. And when you stop feeling them, you've got to stop, start thinking you don't have it at all anymore. The access is always there, guys. We just move away from it. But when you're intentional and when you stop and you think about the things to be grateful for to God and the things that he has done in our lives and the things that we still have, even now, to be thanking him for, our joy and our peace and our love can all get better. Well, patience is the same way. As God builds it in our lives through the tough times, when things get easier, we have to remember to maintain what he has grown in us, to continue to practice it. Romans 8.25 says, But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Ultimately, our hope is to see Jesus. That, that should be the ultimate hope of the Christian. I mean, there's things in our lives, there's, there's these like waypoints and goals that we want to achieve and things like that. I like to eat, so I look forward to the next meal. There's all these things, right? If you're a public employee, you wait till that next payday. You know, whatever it is. We're always waiting on these things. But ultimately, that thing that we're really waiting on is for, for me, when I get to see Jesus. 
That's what I'm really waiting for. Everything else is the stuff that's on the way, but I'm waiting for that. And guys, that takes, for us, for me, that takes the rest of my life. There's only two ways that I'm going to get to see Jesus. I'm going to die or he's going to come for me. All right? Now, whichever one of those things happens first, I'm seeing Jesus. That's how that goes. I hope you're going to be in the same boat. But catch this. Whichever way that is, my life here on earth will be different. This life I'm living is going to be over, whether it's me dying or Jesus coming for me. It's going to mark a change. A great, wonderful, glorious change. And that's what I patiently wait for. And see, we start with that long-range goal there of seeing Jesus. And we know that's going to take the rest of our lives, whoever that's going to be. And so you better hunker in for the ride. It's going to take a while. I don't know how long the rest of our lives is, but we have it to work out. And see, there he is at the end, and we wait patiently. We know it's going to be a long thing. It's more of a marathon than a sprint, guys. In Ephesians 4.2, it says, With all humility and gentleness, with patience. Now, you all can see this up here. Bearing with one another in love. Now, there's patience that we have waiting on God. And then there's patience we have dealing with each other. Amen? Now, you guys are great about this. I, and I'm not even saying that because I'm your pastor, but you guys are fantastic at loving each other, and don't ever take that for granted. I mean, that's the thing that God puts together. But again, we have to continue to be mindful of this, that we need to be loving each other, because you let your guard down, and that can go away. Patiently bearing with one another. You know, we're all different. And we're a family. And like any family, everybody's a little bit different. Okay? And every family has the weird ones. Right? I was, I was mine in my family. I'll give it up. Uh, so, we all have to love each other for who God made us to be, though. And the beautiful thing is, all of us together make what God intends the place to be. Every church that gathers together, you know, that, that's gathering under the Lordship of Christ, all the members that he has called to be part of that church, in whatever way they, they are fitting together, it takes all of them to make the whole of what God wanted it to be. We need each other. So we better love on each other so we can keep having each other. We, uh, guys, face it, out there in the world, we don't have a lot of support system here can be the safe place. Here can be the place where we love each other, even through differences. This is the place where we get better together. So we can take some love out there. Galatians 6, 9 says, And let us not grow weary of doing good. For in, good, in due season we will reap if we do not give up. I know the word patience is not in there, but this idea of not giving up is. And so many times, guys, it just... I get it, it gets old. And you get up, you get out there again, you got to put that mask on again to go to work. Uh, I got to, Half the time, I'm across the parking lot. I remember I'm supposed to have a mask. I go get my mask back. <coughs> we, these are times that will wear you out quick. We got health care workers in, in the church with us that, uh, I, I love you all, you're giving it up so hard, you're working so hard. And, you know, educators and things like that. And it's every level, there's so much, much today. And it's easy to get weary. But don't get weary in doing good. You know, we, we spent a lot of years, those of you that are adults with me, we've spent a lot of years with it relatively easy where we live. And the last year might have gotten tougher. But we need to just keep on keeping on. We've got to keep on getting tough with it. We have to keep enduring. We have to keep on doing well and doing the right things. Because if we only love when it's easy to love, everybody can do that. I believe Jesus wants his people to shine in these times. To stand out. To be a beacon. 
to be a light. And we can't do that if we give up. So knowing that God will do what he says, we wait patiently, we lovingly hold each other up, we wait patiently, keeping the good fight, even when we're tired, we work patiently. Patience is so important to us. So the core of who we should be as Christians. So, after you get it, you prepare for it, you practice it, when is it going to be perfect? When do I have to, when can I stop working on patience in my life? I bet you could guess. You know, you know I mentioned when we see Jesus, that's kind of it right there. That's when we get to stop working on this, because it's going to take till then to get it right. Like so many things, yeah, I, I think Beth was saying something that people are already, now there is snow on the ground and people are thinking about their gardens. See, that, that's, I'm a city boy. I can't even get my head around that. <laughs> you know, you grow things when things grow, not when it's snowing outside. I, that's just not something I grew up with or learned. But you know, you got to do it if you're going to have stuff later. The, the thing is, the next year, you got to plant stuff again. And then you bring the crop, and then the next year, you got to plant. You got to keep on doing it. There's not a year you just get to sit back and say, well, the garden will grow itself. Not the time when you get to sit back and say, the well, patience will just happen. It's okay. I don't have to worry about it today. That'll be the day you've got to worry about it. <laughs> Psalms 37 7 says this Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. I want you to think about how this says this. Fret not yourself over the one who prospers in his way, over the man who carries out evil devices. So many times we look around us and we see evil in our world, things that are just wrong in our world, happening and continuing and seemingly winning. But God says, fret not about that. Instead, wait patiently for the Lord. We need to do all that we can do and all that is in front of us to do. To do the right things. To make those right decisions. As citizens, to use our right to vote in the right way. Let our voices be heard. But at the end of this, we have to wait on the Lord. And sometimes that is a lot harder than others. But it's still the same thing. Even though it looks like evil's triumphing, even though it looks like we're just getting buried under with it out there. Wait on the Lord. He will show up. And I would even tell you he is working even now. Whether you see it or not, whether you feel it or not, God is at work, his plan is still going forward. Ultimately, this will all work out. <coughs> Philippians 4, 6 says, Do not be anxious about anything. I want you to think about that for a second. Guys, just, you know, look it up in your own Bibles. Find whatever translation you like. And I'm pretty sure it's going to tell you, do not be anxious about anything. You can go back to the Greek. I've got a Greek-English lexicon if you want to borrow it that will tell you the Greek words that are being used there, and you know what it translates as? Anything. Those, those Greek words will translate to don't worry about anything. I would challenge you, find a time in the Bible, a place in the Bible where it tells you to worry about something. No. We're not supposed to be warriors. We're not supposed to be fearful, wise, careful. Yeah. But we're not supposed to live in fear. And we are not supposed to be anxious about things. Because that type of fear and anxiety keeps you from doing anything. What we need to do is be people of wisdom and discernment. And keep on doing the right things for God. It says you don't be anxious about anything, but... 
So see, there's something we can do. In everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. So don't worry about it. Give it to God. Thankfully, give it to God. Lovingly give it to God. With all of the stuff that you need, give it to God. And then get out there and do what you need to do. Whatever that is. 1 Corinthians 13, 4. Love is patient. And he even goes further. And kind. Love doesn't envy or boast. It's not arrogant. It goes on. But it starts out with love is patient. So I would throw it out there to you that impatience is not love. Y'all get that? So that moment that you become impatient... Which, I can do that too. Guys. I, I can be impatient in a heartbeat if I'm not paying attention. But in that, I'm not loving. My impatience is never going to show people God's love. Y'all get that? You ever been around and that one person is just going off on somebody else? Because they are tired of waiting on something? Yeah. Did that show any love? Was love what you thought in that moment? No. But you know, the other end of that happens. Our patience speaks volumes of love. Especially, you get hold of somebody who's had a lot of people be impatient with them, and you wait on them, encourage them, lovingly be patient with them, change their entire day. You may change your entire life. Just by your patience. First Thessalonians 5.14 says, We urge you, brothers, admonish the idle, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with them all. I think it's important. And guys, we can build a lifetime out of doing that. You know, when is it perfect? When we're done. Because we get to spend our entire life working on being patient to the idle, being patient with the faint-hearted, being patient with the weak, while we admi admonish, encourage, and help. Patience with all of them. James 5 says, Be patient, therefore, brothers, when until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient about it so it receives the early and late rains you also be patient establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord is at hand we can perfect our patience until we see Jesus As a matter of fact we're called to we must keep preparing keep practicing keep perfecting our patience before God with others and with ourselves we need to be patient with us, too. You know, that we have a long journey with us, like the rest of our life, inside of ourselves here, right? And there are things that we want from ourselves that we want it to happen now, but it doesn't. There's things we want to do and we end up not doing, things we don't want to do that we end up doing because we are a failed human race. Don't lose patience with yourself. Let God work in you. 